the ship, Nix. Waka's been busy. When we return to the Trailblazer, Waka has continued to make improvements. As we enter, we hear Kay's heroic theme played on a trumpet herald through first. It's alone but strong, just like Kay. But Waka still isn't done with his work. We still can't make the jump to hyperspace, and so he sends us out to steal a class 11 power core for the Trailblazer next. For this, we head to a nearby Imperial base to begin the search. The music in the base begins with just low drones to encourage sneaking, but a lone snare drum enters occasionally as well to give us that sense of a military base. It cutting through as everything else remains soft though, kept me alert and poised for anything to happen. But next we're off to find the Castellan, and as we arrive, string music enters first with tremolos to foreshadow a bit of danger. Low voices continue from there, maintaining a subtle warning but also reflecting the massive size of the ship. The swells that follow don't deliver a specific character either, leaving a lot of space as we approach the actual entrance to the ship. And as we do go inside the dimly lit ship, the music reverts to string tremolo and eerie haunting sounds in the soundtrack. Occasional jump scares occur in a way that I was actually very impressed by too. It seemed like Roget built in music cues that the music would actually react and play when certain pieces of the ship broke apart as well. It made the entire experience feel more realistic and immersive as the music reacts directly to our experience. The random found sounds and out of place cues also tend to blend into the overall sound of the ship creaking and almost making it difficult to discern one from the other. This wasn't the track that will win Rajat any awards in regard to music, but this was a very well tailored and controlled track for the entire ship exploration that did the best job that music could have done here, simply enhancing our experience without taking away from anything. But throughout all of this music and darkness that was only lit by Kay's flashlight, I was admittedly also just sort of waiting for something to jump out at me like an old droid or a space zombie or something because of that music. A brief lightness enters in the flutes as we find the reactor before once again being swallowed up by the darkness of the music again. The duality of keys here ended up giving those flutes a distorted feeling by the end as well that just made everything feel more unsettled. And as we continue to explore the massive ship, the low strings continue to remind us of the full size of the ship. I appreciated that the developers tried to really commit to the size of this ship and made us explore for a while. This was a risk considering there wasn't anyone to battle and much overall to do besides explore. But I think they struck the right balance between making us continue through a large ship and keeping everything interesting by pacing out occasional dialogue or discoveries of journals like that of the technician.
and as I made it to the bridge, I could tell that the game was setting us up for something bad to happen with Waka. First, this was obvious that something was clearly distracting Waka, and that couldn't mean anything good. Huh? Oh, yeah, perfect. Nav computer will be in the console. Okay. But also, I noticed that they set these explosives around the bridge, which would be weird for any ship to have on their bridge, but the only reason that they would be here in the game is if the developers thought we might need them. So clearly, there was about to be a showdown. As I looked around, a sound like a heartbeat entered in the music as well, and clearly, this was meant to push our own heartbeat to increase and push our adrenaline and fear as well, foreshadowing the danger that was about to enter. And sure enough, as we turn on the computer, Zarek Besh agents enter. Cue those explosives. The heartbeat turned into drums as the firefight got underway. But as we grab the nav computer, Waka approaches Gun Risen. Don't be mad, Kay. I mean, I knew what she needed. The music rises and crescendos into a swell as we move toward an inevitable moment. As Waka tells us that he's doing this for the trailblazer, it cuts away, allowing a brief relaxation as he explains himself. I mean, I knew what she needed. I know what she's been through. I'm the one who fixed her. You're gonna kill me for a no. ship? Zarek Besh wanted you alive, but I can't afford any loose ends. But that break gives Vale enough time to kill him and now hold up her gun against us. As she does, Slero's theme enters, signifying her employer. Vale, right? If this is about Slero's ship or the Rebels, it's just a big, big misunderstanding. I don't care. Uh, at least hear me out. As the ship begins to overload, the music builds as well. As Kay takes the opportunity to run, her heroic theme enters next. It picks up pace after that as we have to flee through the collapsing ship. Continuous motion in the strings keeps the energy going. Slero's theme enters again to remind us of our pursuers several more times. The music pauses as Kay reaches a closed door that she can't open. Vale catches up to her and the music fades momentarily along with Kay's hope. Enough. Just come quietly. But just then, the door opens and BD2 pulls her out and saves her. As we escape, the music builds to a false climax with no resolution. I said, run. Chase music follows then as we return to the lands of Toshara and the caverns that we entered through. But as we move into the open fields, the music settles as we escape danger. As we return to the trailblazer, we find ourselves with unexpected guests. The trumpets return to herald us back with another variation of Kay's heroic theme as we meet Jalen Vrax in ND5. As he introduces himself, a new theme enters in the piano very clearly, immediately tying Jalen to his theme. Its most notable trait is the answering phrase that holds a syncopation or attack on an offbeat that adds an interesting element of energy to the theme. 
And I hear you got into Slero's mansion without these. I'm excited that we're getting more themes for what will be key characters in the storyline. As Jalen shows Kay the schematics of Slero's mansion, Slero's theme enters next to remind us of the danger. Them all together. Tank Ferrick. This really is Slero's mansion, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And the schematics for a safe filled with 157 million credits worth of unmarked Beskar ingots. It returns again as he reminds her that he's increased his security since the last job. to shut up that gatekeeper. Enough explosives to blow through that chromium time lock. And don't forget, Slero's amped up security since your last little visit. You'll need two slicers to get it. After that, light music plays underneath to allow for clear dialogue. I'm in. As Jalen leaves Kay, his theme enters again, but in the lows, as it threatens the same way he does about Kay double-crossing oh, him. ND5 has a list. Track him down. Get our crew. Oh, and don't stab me in the back. Andy's programmed to make sure that doesn't happen. As he exits, Slira's Galaxy's theme enters yours. again as Kay's mind returns to the danger at hand. You believe that? I believe if you follow the plan, no one gets hurt. Great. Notably, Kay's theme is absent throughout all of this as she's lost her control and power of the situation entirely now. And with that, we're off again in our ship. The heroic theme enters again as we take off in powerful fashion. This time, we jump to hyperspace with a powerful cord in the brass to see us off. You're next. Treats! Oh boy. And before we arrive at Kajimi, we sidestep to a scene with Slero as he explains a little more of his backstory. His haunting demeanor is highlighted by individual entrances keeping hey, the music working. exposed. Before I built Zarek Bash. My family built ships on Corellia. Did you know that? I did not. This model, the EML 850. Inconspicuous, virtually indestructible, perfect for the underworld. But they were expensive. Dura steel plating alone cost a fortune. There was a BX commander. Unfortunately, there were other ships that could do the job for much less. I just need more time. I hire you because you are one of the best hunters in the Outer Rim. Then I tell you someone broke into my private vaults and stole one of the last EML 850s in the galaxy, and you assumed she was working alone. Do you know what happened to these ships? Destroyed. Repurposed. Scrapped. Do you understand? I'll find her. I just need... Like I mentioned before, this music on its own wasn't anything impressive, but it took a disciplined and confident composer to know that this is what was needed for this stage of the game. Absent of living beings and without anything to build energy, Rajat relied on a track that camouflaged itself into the texture of its surroundings and became something more than just music. But I absolutely would love to know what all of you think. I'm breaking the game down as I play it, similar to how I would watch a weekly TV show, so there are elements that may make more sense to me as I release later videos for further missions. What did you think of the music during this stage of the game? And did you expect something to go wrong like what I suggested? Did you expect Waka to betray us or for Zarek Besh to show up right here? Tell me in the comments below what you think and consider checking out my Patreon page using the link in the description where you can help support this channel for as little as $1 a month or download PDFs and MP3s of projects as I complete them, along with other perks at higher tiers. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to learn more about the music of a galaxy far, far away, and as always, may the... be with you.